Good morning and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Uh, we've got James Johnson in the house. She is having some internet uh, difficulties, but she's still here. So hopefully we can hear her. If not, uh, we just gonna keep on rocking this thing. And so thank God for technology, right? So we've got Minda Ayala uh, coming in already typing a one. We've got her saying good morning all the way from Salem, Oregon and Mark Latham, uh, messaged me this morning and told me that he was not able to be on today. He's got a few appointments, so let's keep him in prayer. And he said, to tell Jens, hello. So we're going to keep rocking this thing. Um, remember, if you're coming in on a replay, hashtag replay um, so that we can connect with you. And so really quick, what I want to do is we want to be able to honor um, Martin Luther King. All right. So I'm going to put this post up real quick that I got from Pam Smart. Um, and it's it's so, so true. And so darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And so we just want to honor Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King um, for for his legacy, especially in these days, this craziness that's going on. Um, we just, you know, we just want to, uh, just acknowledge this day today. And so I'm going to kick us off in prayer. Um, Jens, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. We're good okay, to go. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Awesome. <laughs> and so we're going to kick this thing off. I'm going to kick us off in prayer and everyone keep me lifted, please. Cause I'm dealing with some, uh, some throat issues and stuff. And so we bind every sickness away from me in the name of Jesus. So we're going to kick this off. All right. So father, we just thank you this morning. Father, we thank you that you are uh, in control. We thank you that you are sovereign. We thank you that we're able to come on wake up in the word and really do what we are called to do. And so father, no matter what technical difficulties come our way, we know that you have an answer for everything. And so father, we bind every, um, um, issue away from us. And we ask, Lord, that your glory would show up today. Father, we um, acknowledge this day today for Martin Luther King, for what he has done in this in this life of ours to bring peace. And no matter what that uh, resulted in, Father, we continue to claim that peace today in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, have your way in this broadcast. Bless us today and we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen is right. And, and I love I love Martin Luther King. I'm telling you, you know, I was actually talking with some friends the other day and I said in life, you you have to choose to follow leaders. And right. Martin Luther King was a true leader. You know, there's a lot of people that give information. But then there are leaders and Martin Luther King is a leader. So, yeah, we Absolutely. honor we definitely honor him um, this day and all the leaders in the world. <laughs> and let yes. me tell you, we got some good leaders around. So uh, in Genesis 37, it goes to Jacob um, and his son, Joseph. So, you know, Joseph was the um one of one of Jacob's last sons that he had. And of course, as we know, Jacob favored and loved Joseph more than all of his other other um, sons that he had. And, you know, at the very beginning of chapter 37, so Genesis 37 in um, verse three and four. Now, Israel, because, you know, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And so, you know, I, it made me think the very first, the very first murder at, at the very beginning of, of Genesis that we read of is Cain how he murdered his brother because of jealousy, you know? So the spirit of jealousy is, it's a, uh, it's a doozy, man. <laughs> it gets you, it gets you doing things that, um, that aren't good. So obviously that Joseph dreamed a dream. So, you know, one of the gifts that Joseph was given was to be able to interpret dreams 
And, um, you know, he dreamed the dream. And when he told his brother about the dream that he was, that he had his, his brother, his brothers hated him even more. And they got together and conspired and said, let's get rid of this little nut. (laughs) Let's get rid of this guy. (laughs) We don't like what he's doing. He, our father loves him more than all of us. And let's get rid of him. Right. And so at first, first they wanted to kill him. And of course, Reuben said, you know, no, let, let's not kill him. You know, let's not have blood on our hands, but let's, um, let's put him in a pit, you know, and in this right. pit, there wasn't going to be any food, any water, and, you know, at the very end of the chapter, they, um, you know, in 31, they took Joseph's coat because, of course, J- J- Israel, Jacob, um, you know, made Joseph this beautiful coat of many colors. Um, and they took the coat from Joseph. They put blood on it from um, an animal. And then they took it back to to Jacob and said, I mean, they took it back to Joseph, the Israel, the father, and said, you know, here's here's Joseph's coat. And, of course, his dad was just rot, you know, right. and and I can't remember exactly where, but it, there's a verse that was talking about how his, his the dad, the father, you know, Israel, he was so upset that he, he didn't he didn't even want to get better. You know, he, he wanted to be upset. Um, so that's really what happened in 37. What, and, you know, it just made, of course you go into 38 and they sell, they sell Joseph to, um, to, I can't remember the exactly the name of the guy that they sell him to, but they sell him to, to, um, and he was in prison, but in the prison, he starts, he starts um, interpreting dreams. And so they start realizing, man, you know, this guy, he's, he's something special. So, you know, the very first dream that he dreamed um, where his brothers didn't like the dream was that obviously, and we know Jacob was going to be, I mean, Joseph was going to be a ruler of them. Right. And he gets out of the prison because of his, of his, um, his gifts. And, you know, it just made me think pastor Paul, how, what God has planned for our life. If we just remain faithful, we're, he's going to make sure that those blessings and those callings, if we remain steadfast and faithful, we're going to receive those regardless what craziness happens in our life. So Absolutely. we've got to keep, you know, we got to keep moving forward. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, this this story is one of my my favorite, favorite stories um, in the Bible. Um, I, I have a ton of them, but this one here is one of my favorites because he had the promise. And no matter what took place, um, there, th- God's promise was still fulfilled, just like you said. And so, it, it, you know, this this whole um, line of brothers that just that didn't like him, um, you know, one <laughs> one of the things that I always always crack up about is that if they didn't already like you because you've got the 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 tunic of many colors, you're favored more by your father. Um, why would you share share that story that they're going to bow down to you? And so it's almost as if. <laughs> He kind of brought some of that stuff on himself, even though the promise was true. Even his own father said, you know, his own father, Jacob, I always get the names mixed up, but Jacob rebuked him. But the Bible says that he kept the matter in mind. And so what does that mean? He knew that that was from God. He knew that there was something special about Joseph. He knew that there was a promise that God had already foretold to him about what the lineage was going to be. And so in that story, and as we fast forward, like you said, now he's in a pit. Now he's being taken to Egypt. 
And here's what we as the body have to understand that even though promise is upon our life, just because he had the promise and just because he was royalty in God's eyes doesn't mean that on his trip from where he was to Egypt was this pleasant uh, ride. They didn't just put him on top of a camel and let him walk. No, they tied him up and prisoners back then had had to walk to their destination. They had to walk in order to get there. And so where was he walking? He was he was walking behind the camel. He was walking in and, you know, stepping on, on, on camel poop. And so this journey now to get to the promise is one of the hardest things for him, but he kept his, his mind in a place of promise. And so now, now we go into the whole part of where now he's, you know, uh, in this new land, he's in this new country. Um, he's in this place. And so, now he's he's uh going through adversity through this time and so as as we go into the the reading for today for the for the 18th this is the place where i got to find this thing here it is um this is the place where now this is all fast forwarded now he's in that in that land and like you said now he's in this in this place where He's interpreting dreams and he's getting exalted. He's moving up in the ranks, but then he still has to sit in prison again because of the crazy queen that was blaming him for coming after her. Now he's back in prison. So he went from the pit to the palace to the to the prison. And then from here, then he has to stay there another few years. I think it was like seven or eight years again because somebody didn't speak of him until something bad happened and the Pharaoh wanted answers. Then he said, oh my God, I remember this guy. And so there's so much nuggets in there for us to understand that God never forgets us. No matter how much adversity comes through our life, no matter where we are, God's greatness still remains. So Jens, take it away. Yeah. You know, when in, in 39, and at the very beginning, and Joseph was brought to Egypt. So this is going back just a little bit, but I think it's important. And in verse two, it says, and the Lord was with Joseph mm -hmm. and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master and his master saw that the Lord was with them. Yes. And, you know, it's, it, we, it, it's like we, when we talked about with, with Laban and, your countenance, you know, we want to be the type of people that regardless the situation that people, they see, they feel something different, you know, and then, like you said, you know, Joseph, of course, he is the interpreter, the, the Queens, the, the rulers, you know, he's interpreting the dreams of, of the people, you know, and then like you were saying, um, in, in first, I mean, in chapter 42, the very beginning chapter, I mean, verse second. And he said, behold, I have heard that there's a corn in Egypt because there was a famine, you know, there, there, the famine starts to come and, um, that you may live and not die. And so again, he's using his gifts and talents. And so, you know, we talked a little bit about like last, last, uh, last week where, you know, and it says in, in the scriptures, what happens if we don't use our gifts and talents, God takes them away. And, you know, it, it made me think of when I was reading this is, you know, are we, number one, do we know what our God-given gifts and talents are? You know, are we aware of them? And are we using it? And are we using those talents to build up God's kingdom on this earth? Come on. Um, and, you know, listen, you know, you and I are in similar industries, you know, as, as coaches. Mm -hmm. And before 
COVID, I was using my gifts and talents to build other people up and, and to help, but I wasn't actively trying to build up the Lord's kingdom on earth. You know, of course, wow. I was in in the sense of, you know, I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to help my family do good and everything. But that's really the message that that just came to me is, you know, do you know what your gifts are? And are we using them? And and that's just something that, you know, as we get off today is, you know, everybody, you know, get down on your knees and pray and ask, Father, what are the gifts and talents that you gave me that make me special? That if I use these gifts and talents this is what's going to attract people to me. This is what's going to make me stand out. This is what's going to make people um, people see that I'm not just a believer of you. I'm a doer of your word. Um, because I think that's really what Joseph did. And that's how, no matter what situation he was in, because he was using those gifts that God gave him, he was seen as special, but we're all special. We're mm. all children of God. He's given all of us gifts. Um, it's just, are we, are we using them? Are we cultivating them? And if we are, we're going to rise up too. Mm. Amen. Amen. I love that because he was in this place and like you said, he was utilizing his gifts and the gifts, you know, the gifts um, are something that that God will uh, switch over to 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 someone else. He will use someone else, in, you know, to do his purpose. You follow what I'm saying? And so we have to remember that even though we walk away, the Bible says the gifts are irrevocable. Your gifts and callings are irrevocable. So no matter how much you run, <laughs> that's why so many people when they backslide are so frustrated because the gifts of God are irrevocable. You can't take those back. Like once God gives them to you, they're yours. However, he will use someone else to fulfill his plan. And so Joseph, no matter what took place, no matter what part of adversity, he finally got to the place of the dream, right? Because he remembered the dream. He remembered what God promised him. And so now he's in this place and Jacob is like, listen, we're running out of food. What are you guys sitting around here for? Go seek out some food. And so here's the powerful part about Joseph still staying humble. This is a story of triumph but it's also a story of humbleness, of meekness, of understanding. Listen, what God meant, or what, what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for my good. And so when his brothers come, he treats them like he don't know them and he has to play the part, but inside he's going, oh my God, these are my brothers. And he could have easily, he could have easily flipped the script and be like, you know what? I'm going to feed my pops and I'll feed Benjamin, but I ain't going to feed you. Here's what y'all did to me. He didn't bring any kind of remembrance. He didn't bring any of that to his brothers. But but, but what he did say is, I'm going to hold you know some of you captive and the rest of you go and get your younger brother and your father. And so you know, all of all of this transpires because he knows the promise. And so his gifts are so powerful that the governor gave him rule of everything and said, you know, <clears throat> whatever Joseph says, make it happen. Do it. Don't question him because he saw that God was with him. And that's the key is that the world will see God in us and will want what we have, or will want us to use those gifts in corporate America, in business, in whatever, right? It doesn't always have to be a Christian business that we work for. Come on, somebody. How are we going to change the world 
if we're caught in our little bubble. And so as this is going on, this is a, a true testimony of God's power that God said, listen, all of this stuff is going on. I need Joseph there so that he can save a nation. And that's that's the powerful part about this whole story is that saving the nation was God's ultimate plan to keep that bloodline going. Because as we know from all of this now stems Jesus Christ coming, you know, a few thousand years later, whatever that that uh, math is. Um, but this is where it's imperative that we understand not to give up hope because the promises are all true. The promises continue to come forth. And so as we walk out this thing called life, as we continue to push forward, we need to understand that God is in control. God is taking care of everything in our lives. And that's just, that's the powerful part about it. So take it away, James. Well, you know, um, it, it's so, it's so true. And it just, it makes you, when, as you read in the scriptures, it makes you realize that all the promises that God makes in these scriptures, um, they, they come true. And um, in, in living in a crazy time in our, in our history, in the country, you know, in the world, um, we know that Jesus Christ is coming again. And we know that when he comes, he's going to he, ban Satan from this earth. And so we just, we have to, we have to keep moving forward and, and be positive. You know, in, in chapter 43, um, in verse 30, and Joseph made haste for his bowels, did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep. And he entered his, into his chambers and he wept there. And, you know, it just, it, you can relate to that. You know, you can relate to there are going to be, you know, we've been, all of us at times have been wronged. All of us at times from our family. I mean, you know, and I'm going to tell you, I was talking to my, my older sisters in town and, um, you know, we were talking about a situation where the one person that's hurt me more than anyone in my entire life is a family member. You know, the one person and, you know, it's, it's one of those things where did it, was that hurt? worse because it was a family member you were so close to that person and that's why it hurt more you know maybe so but you you've got to realize but at the same time it doesn't matter you you love your family and um and so he he wept and i think it's um i think it's important that you know that we remember um to have that, that forgiveness and that we can just don't get tripped up. You know, what, if, what if Joseph, you know, I mean, you know, that was, it's pretty, it's a pretty big deal when your, fr your brothers want to kill you. And, and so, but they, they, they get rid of you, but Joseph still loved his brothers and and he he didn't just sit there in sorrow thinking about and getting rot and upset and mad and letting his life be ruined he blossomed where he was planted he grew and and he used those gifts and talents no matter what happened, but at the end, when, you know, when I read that, it just, it made me, you know, you can just feel, um, but then he washed his face and he went out and he moved on, you know, he kept going. He just kept going. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when we read, I forget which chapter it is. I'm trying to look it up, but um, as we read, um, Joseph finally came to a point where when he had his children, um, 
he literally named them in a way that would remind him of what God did for him, how God blessed him through his adversity. And so he named his children a certain thing, um, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, which interprets, you know, God bless me in my wilderness. God bless me in these adverse times. And that's where, where we have to understand that in the worst of times, this is where we build the altars before God. This is where we name something. This is where we journal. This is where we, you know, however that works for you, visually create a video, post a post, a post, whatever, but mark your, mark your journey. Like really look at it and name it and say, you know what? This is the point of my life that God uh, blessed me even through my most adverse situations. And you're so right that sometimes and that's 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 the hard pill to swallow sometimes is that our family it's just what it is i've hurt my family and i've had my family hurt me you follow what i'm saying it's because they're they're so close to us that we would never think that they would do something like that and that's why it's imperative in marriage that you have those date nights, that you carve out that time to be able to go and hang out with your spouse. Because why do we treat those that are closest to us a certain way? Because we always think that they're always going to be there and because we're comfortable. Let's face it. When we meet somebody new, when, when you're introduced to somebody, your whole personality, your whole character goes to the next level. Oh, hi, it's so nice to meet you, and yada, yada, yada. And when you come home, you're like, hey, what's up, babe? How's it going? There, <laughs> there's, we have to be the people that are, and I'm preaching to myself, that we have to you know, highlight our spouses in our minds and know that, you know what, they're the ones that are there for us. And so that's just where I see that everything needs to be um really focused. You follow what I'm saying? Really focused on what's important to us because the promises never return void. They never return void to God. And so I just want to, you know, as a wrap up, because I have to literally leave at six o'clock, I've got this meeting. Um, if you have any final thoughts, gents, go ahead and pop in and then we'll just close this out. If you yeah, know. no, um, I, 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 I love I love what we're doing here, reading through the book, um, you know, together. And I can't see everybody's comments on my phone. But, you know, I just think it's important that we are just, as we read, that we're mindful to what is it that we need to, um, to take in in our lives at this time. You know, we don't just read the stories and we don't just think, you know, man, this is, the, you know, as the world turns. But. We think, you know, um, you know, are we using our gifts? What are those gifts? And how am I treating my family? And and am I am I you know am I standing in my presence, uh, or am I not? So we're gonna pray it out so we can get you out of here uh, right on time. Our Father, we are so grateful for this day, Father, and we are so grateful for you. We are we are grateful for the immense amount of of love that you have for us that we have, we're living in a time where we have um, the Bible to, in the scriptures to bless us, Father, that, that we learn about you. We learn about um, the, the way that, that you've dealt with our, our ancestors. Father, we're, we're so grateful that we have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that if we will just do our best you know, we, we're, we're not perfect. We'll never be perfect. But if we'll just do our best to to give our lives to thee, to to uh, put our desires and wants to the side and and strive to live our lives in alignment, what your d desires and, and wants are for us. And we know, Father, if we do that, if if we if we have the courage of our conviction, if we, if we have that obedience in faith, Father, that no matter what we walk through, no matter what situation is, 
that we're going to be victorious in the end because we know father that's what you want you want us to be victorious and it's through the obstacles it's through the adversities it's through the struggles it's through the ups and downs that we grow and we know that we have to grow father we know that we have to be stronger we can't just stay in one place and we've got to constantly be um we have to grow so that we can be better disciples and and help build up your kingdom father so father we we ask that you'll watch over and bless all of our community whether they are watching live or on replay we pray that that we might be able to just forgive all those that have trespassed against us father and please forgive us of our trespasses we pray, Father, that we will we won't be tempted this day to to do bad. That will be that will be inspired, Father, to to do good wherever we go. We pray for our country. We pray for freedom um, to remain in our land, and we pray for and give thanks for Martin Luther King this day and and the legacy of love that he that he has left on this earth. And we pray, Father, that we might have a desire to, to leave a legacy of love wherever we go, that we will we'll share that with um, people that we encounter. So we ask these things, Father, and any other blessings you see we stand in need of in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So all right, uh, everybody. Sorry that you can't see my face. We'll get, we'll get this taken care of for tomorrow. And until we meet again, be big, be bold, and most importantly, be you. Bye-bye, everybody.